ready? Justice defined as based on or behaving according to what is morally right and fair. Torture is defined as the act of inflicting excruciating pain as a means of getting a confession or information. Just implies that an action must be morally permissible to be carried out. Thus, the pro's burden is to prove that torture is morally permissible, while the con has to prove it is not. While the pro advocates that torture will prevent terrorism, resulting in the mitigation of mass human suffering, I contend that torture is counterproductive and instigates additional potential terrorism. Contention 1. Torture is counterproductive. Sub point A. Torture causes more terrorism in the future. The Truman Project reported that terrorist attacks in Iraq increased 11 times after Abu Ghraib from 132 pre-Abu Ghraib to 1,450 afterwards. The report continues, quote, Torture and its symbols, Guantanamo Bay and Abu Ghraib, create a larger swath of individuals who want to do us harm. It allows terrorists to spread lies and slander America in fence-sitting populations in the Muslim world. The results, more people who want to kill Americans. This hardly makes America safer. Torture Torture is the gift that keeps on giving to terrorists. The implication is that there is an increase in terrorism due to torture. Matthew Alexander concludes, quote, As the senior interrogator in Iraq for a task force charged with hunting down Abu Zarqawi, the former al-Qaeda leader and mass murderer, captured foreign fighters cite the torture and abuse at Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo as their main reason for coming to Iraq to fight. Consider that 90% of the suicide bombers in Iraq are these foreign fighters, and you can easily conclude that we have lost hundreds, if not thousands, of American lives because of our policy of torture and abuse. There are other young Muslims who have joined al-Qaeda because we tortured and abused prisoners. These men will certainly carry out future attacks against Americans, not to mention numerous other Muslims who support al-Qaeda either financially or in other ways because they are outraged that the U.S. tortured and uh, abused Muslim prisoners. Subpoint B. Torture victims often fabricate stories to satisfy the torture and stop the pain that comes with torture. This is empirically verified in the example of su suspect Saddam Saleh Aboud's torture at Abu Ghraib. After being subject to torture, Aboud told the New York Times that, quote, after being hooded and handcuffed naked, Doused with water, threatened with rape, and forced to sit in his own urine over 18 days at Abu Ghraib, he was ready to confess to anything. At one point, Mr. Abu said, quote, They asked me about Osama bin Laden. I said, I am Osama bin Laden. I am disguised. End quote. This example shows that the information prov uh, provided from torture is highly unreliable and arbitrary, thus showing that torture is ineffective. Contention 2. Torture tarnishes the image of the state that pursues it. To torture would mean to be a terrorist as well. Terrorists are defined as groups of individuals that use terror and violence to achieve a certain goal. Torture is the same methodology as a torturer seeks to uncover information by using physical action and violence. Not only does the state that tortures become nearly equivalent to terrorists, but they set an international norm that torture is okay and should be pursued. Kenneth Roth continues, quote, whether it is Egypt justifying torture by reference to U.S. practice, Malaysia defending administrative detention by invoking Guantanamo, Russia citing Abu Ghraib to blame, abu to blame abuses in Chechnya, or Cuba claiming the Bush administration had no moral authority to accuse it of human rights violations, repressive governments find it easier to deflect U.S. pressure because of Washington's own sorry counterterrorism record on human rights. The, con the continuous use of torture will cause it to proliferate and soon become an international norm. But con contention three, torture violates human dignity. Roth, too, explains, quote, Yet torture remains the despicable practice it has always been. It dehumanizes people by treating them as pawns to be manipulated through their pain. It harnesses the awesome power of the state and applies it to human beings that are most vulnerable. Breaching any restraint of reprocity subjects the victim to abuse that the perpetrator would never himself want to suffer. End quote. A government that constantly violates human dignity will eventually do the same to their own citizens as well. Contention four. Torture is not subjected to the detainee. Goodman explains, quote, if the ticking bomb justification is accepted, there is, for example, no reason in principle why torture should be limited to suspects. Why not torture the family and friends of the detainee to make him compliant or see if they have information? Adopting an ends justify the means approach would allow nine innocent people to be tortured as as long as the tenth offered a full conf con confession, end quote. Thus, because of the disadvantages and violations of morality torture pre prevents, you ought to vote con. Opponents ready? Partner ready? Judges? 
We affirm, resolved, torture is the just means of preventing terrorism. We offer the following observations. One, affirming does not mean the random and unchecked torturing of innocent people. Torture would be only used only in necessary situations. Furthermore, the affirmative does not advocate torture without accountability. This round should be judged using a utilitarian framework where we value the safety of a large amount of people over the liberty of one who actively tries to harm those innocent people. Also, the affirmative need not prove that torture is just in every single situation, but only in that certain situation it can be a just way to prevent terrorism. Contention 1. Torture works. According to George Tenet, former director of the CIA in his 2007 memoir, the tough interrogation of al-Qaeda members thwarted more than 20 plots against U.S. infrastructure targets including communications nodes, nuclear power plants, dams, bridges, and tunnels. A future airborne attack on America's West Coast was likely foiled only because the CIA didn't have to treat KSM like a white-collar criminal. Mark Bowden, an Atlantic national correspondent, discussed another effective benefit of torturing when writing about the American team that cracked Abu Musaf al-Zarqawi's inner circle. Fear, the most powerful interrogation tool, was always present. The well-publicized abuses at Abu Ghraib and elsewhere put all detainees on edge, and assurances that the U.S. command had cracked down were not readily believed. The prospect of being shipped to the larger prison, notorious during the American occupation, and even more so during the Saddam era, was enough to persuade many subjects to talk. Contention 2. Torture will always be preferable to the alternative outcome. At the point where torture has successfully stopped mass murder by terrorists, even in one situation, you're always going to affirm. The reason for this is that the benefit to society of saving a large amount of lives is always going to outweigh the temporary physical harm done to one guilty terrorist. Alvin Chauhan of the University of Toronto elaborates, A man is a terrorist guilty of murdering civilians and is in possession of sensitive information that could prevent the deaths of hundreds of innocents. He, however, refuses to divulge this knowledge. What's to be done? An official proposes torture. Physical pain is inflicted upon the prisoner until at length he confesses the desired information. Was this ethical? A human human being was subjected to extreme physical agony, yet it was done with intention of saving the lives of hundreds of innocents. The end for which torture was employed was to prevent mass murder and with sufficient magnitude. Suppose, however, that our imagined scenario was altered, that our prisoner was unshaken in the face of his torturous ordeals that remained silent, or worse, that the victim did not possess the information he was alleged to know or that was the wrong person to begin with, either mistaken for his identity or falsely accused. In the case of the man immune to the pains of torture, may we argue that one must try everything possible and that the suffering endured by a man comfortable with allowing mass murder is not wholly lamentable. The innocent man who is without any fault, who has been subjected to torture, is on the other hand truly deserving of pity. It is a sad and tragic fact of life that innocent men are tortured. However, the greater good, the preservation of life, is so powerful and worthy an aim. The temporary physical pain inflicted upon an innocent must be endured from time to time to achieve the larger purpose. A well-run military force will do all in its power to ensure that they're not mistaking the innocent for the guilty. But with all measures have been exhausted and there still remains a risk that the suspect may be entirely innocent, that risk must be taken for the possibility of losing the lives of many is too great to cause us to be afraid of mistreating the individual. For these reasons more, I urge you to vote pro. Thank you. Everyone ready? Okay. So I believe you have the first question. Okay, how many contentions did you have? I have two. Two, right? Okay. Yes. You can ask a question. Okay, great. So basically, let's discuss the framework. You're saying that, okay, do you agree that all other rights are predicated upon the right to life? Can you reiterate that? That basically, you have to be alive in order to be able to exercise any other right. Okay, so... Okay, so the fact that the fact remains that the right to life should be the most important right, right within okay. this round, right? That we should aim to protect the li- right to life. If we decrease terrorism, people, if right? we decrease terrorism, just answer the question, please. Okay, what's the question? That the right to life is the most important right, and that we need to do our utmost in order to protect it. Not really. Okay, so you're saying we should let people die because. Th- I'm saying we could use a different force of, like a different course of action. Okay, so let's just examine the value. Can I ask you a question? Okay, sure. Okay, so. You know my contention two. I show how, I mean contention one, how it increases terrorism, right? Isn't that bad? Sure. Okay, we have to look on separate, separate different accounts. You have to look at which is just. In your own framework, you evaluate... No, just answer the okay. question. 
Isn't terrorist, terrorism increasing due to torture bad? I mean, I don't see how that's necessarily irrelevant to the discussion within the framework that we have established. What we've established is we're debating the merits of torture, whether it's justified as um, I know. What if I show that? The end Can I just please speak? Okay, so basically what you've um, said is that life is important, right? So then shouldn't we try to protect the innocent lives of the civilians if it comes down to getting this information? My argument's that torture increases terrorism. Can you answer terrorism. the question, please? I know, I'm trying to. I'm, my argument is that torture increases terrorism. Okay, let that me ask you a question. doesn't answer okay. the question at all. Please, can you just answer? What's your, what's your question? What, okay, what are you asking? Okay, I just asked that basically because the right to life is inherently the most important right. Why is it the most important right? You agreed that you can't. I never agreed to anything. Well, actually, you did. But, okay, so can you explain um, the warrant as okay, to why? I, I'm trying to if you just stop cutting me off. Okay. Okay, great. So basically, you have to be alive. Barring any zombie apocalypse scenario, you cannot exercise any of your rights without being alive. Therefore, the right to life is the most important right that exists. I right? wouldn't say it's the most important right, but it does so, so you're saying that we sh others. So, so you're saying that there are other rights more important than being alive? No, I'm, I'm, I'm disagreeing with the fact that die? we can't just deprive anyone of like all their rights just because in the name of saving their life. You know what I mean? So you're saying the life of people are Can I please is ask outweighed a by some rights of others? Okay, so since the end result of torture Can you answer, please? is increased terrorism, right? Isn't that bad? I mean, you're just ignoring me. Can you please just answer the question? What? What's your question? Okay, again, so isn't it worth it to sacrifice some minor rights of other people in order to preserve the, uh, the lives of many? But we don't have to sacrifice those rights. There are other ways, other means of achieving so that So just end. within the framework, do you agree to that? I don't agree to your framework at all. Okay, that's time. I'm going to All right, everyone ready? Opponent ready? Partner? All right. I'm going to go down their flow, and uh, if time allows, I'll go back to mine. All right. So at the top of the case, they're talking about the framework of where um, you're, they're, they want to just justify it in some scenarios. Now, even if they are justifying in some scenarios, you have to look at the overall outcome of this. What moral and ethical means does it, is this representing for the rest of the world? Now, uh, my opponents keep talking about the right to life and how the right to life is so precious. Now, if the right to life is that precious, you're setting, you're setting, you're going down a slippery slope to the point that you can say that the government can do anything just to preserve your right to life. I can put you in a prison and keep you in a prison as long as you have that right to life. Other aspects have to be considered here. Your liberty and uh, your morality in general. Now, uh, when you're torturing an individual, you're, you're, you're telling your citizens in general that it's all right to almost do an eye for an eye. So if someone breaks my kneecap, like if my opponent over here comes over and breaks my kneecap, I can go over and break his kneecap, basically, just so that the torture is equal. Now, furthermore, if you look towards our case, what we're saying is that torture will lead to more terrorists being involved here, which is counterproductive. Yes, my opponents is all they're going to say is, is the truth getting out there? And the fact is, if you look at any uh, psycho sorry, psychological aspect of torture, torture only works within the first few days as applied. Other than that, information can be fabricated. We bring up an instance where a terrorist said himself he's Osama bin Laden. Why did he say that? He just wanted a pain to stop. So, um, and I'd like to read a quote from Joe Navarro of the FBI. Uh, quote, the only thing torture guarantees is pain. It never guarantees the truth. It's a technique that we, the FBI, has never used. We don't need most of the mil um, military interviews that I've worked with that don't describe it. Basically, what he's trying to say is that there are the regular interrogation techniques do work, and torture no, under no circumstances should be used. I mean, sorry, torture should be used in these cases. Um, on their first contention, they're stating that uh, torture in general does work. So if they're saying that torture does work, what they're saying is that um, these rare scenarios that they're showing that it actually is applicable are one in a million. We show you the fact that um, in our ladder of our second contention, how 
when there's um, a ticking time bomb, so to speak, that doesn't limit it to just that terrorist. What stops us from hurting the families? Basically, what the negative here is trying to say is why where, where where are we stopping here where is the ends to our morals being kept now one you already know that torture only as i stated only works in the first few weeks and two as tony smith's writes uh, torture cannot be regulated because it has no limits the logic of the torture is that victims have their limits if they did not then the torturers cannot justify torture on the ground that is designed to produce results this doctrine implies that if the victim does not comply with the interrogator's wishes, the victim's limit has not been reached. Therefore, it becomes necessary to escalate the pain. This is not desirable or justifiable, but becomes logically necessary. To stop before the limit is reached would mean that the earlier low-level suffering had been inflicted for no good reason at all. Meaning, our opponents here are just justifying it only because they want to protect the right to life without taking into consideration what negative aspects come from that torture. One, as we already stated, um, you're going to be recruiting more terrorists. And two, you're setting a bad example not only to the rest of the world, seeing how not only the United States but all the world's superpowers are um, basically the ethical guidelines to the rest of the world. On, to, on top of the fact that you're having our children brought up to the fact that you're, being, you're justifying something that's uh, you're justifying one thing with something that's unjustifiable in itself. We 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 have our right to life. So do the terrorists. We when, no matter what we're talking about, we're talking about that those terrorists still have rights. Yes, they inflicted harm, but one we do, there's no 100% guarantee that they will be giving us the right information. And two, we don't want to go off on these wild goose hunts. Yes, my opponents are going to keep bringing up over and over again the fact that uh, these rare scenarios can work. But then again, you have if we just continue to regular. Interrogations, and with President Obama now uh, making sure with the Department of Homeland Security under Bush and other aspects that our intelligence is being shared, that's more proper than torture. Thank you. And uh, judge is ready. Okay, I'm going to start with the framework. They never respond to the fact that I that we propose that we're going to judge this round based on a utilitarian moral calculus. So at that point, you can extend that across the flow. We're going to be using that to judge the round. At this point, I really don't see a way for them to win the round. Again, we're talking about using torture not in the cases of torturing innocents randomly, unaccountably. We're talking about using torture in specific cases where we are going to save thousands of lives from a mass attack by terrorists in exchange for temporary physical discomfort for someone who's already trying to harm us. At this point, this is a clear utilitarian benefit for everyone involved for the United States. There's no way you're going to vote neg uh, AF on that. So move to their first contention. They talk about how we're going to increase terrorism through torture. Now, their only point is, look, basically because... Because of torture, we're increasing al-Qaeda recruitment. One, there's already tons of hate for the United States in the, in the Middle East. Recruitment's high there already. They never quantify exactly how much torture is going to increase because we're – sorry, how much recruitment is going to increase because of torture. It's clear that it's not really going to have that big of an effect because there's already – a high dislike for America in the Middle East. Second of all, we're going to outweigh here because we talk about the specific situations in our first contention outlined by George Tenet where we're taking out high-profile terrorists and stopping actual attacks on the United States soil that's going to take away thousands of American lives. Again, that's always outweighing because we're caring more about taking away high-level terrorists who are going to attack the United States as opposed to a few being recruited in the Middle East, that's going to outweigh, again, under utilitarian calculus, that's a clear benefit for saving lives. Again, that's going to be the most important um, right in this uh, debate because lives are inherent to any human dignity that they're talking about. So if you're saving more lives – then you're going to win on the, on the idea of human dignity. So move to subpoint B in this. They talk about how Abi Grave falsified stories. They give one example of a, of a terrorist lying when they were uh, tortured. Again, sure, sometimes torture doesn't work, but at the point where we're showing you that there's a trend of it working ever, you're always going to negate – sorry, you're always – 
Yeah, you're always going to going to affirm because we are creating this utilitarian benefit or we're stopping thousands of people from being murdered. If it ever works, you're going to uh, affirm. So move to their second contention. They talk about how we're setting a norm that it's okay to torture people. Again, that's not at all what the pro is advocating. The pro is advocating that, one, we're g- going to torture people in specific situations where we're going to save a lot of lives. That's what we're advocating. We're not saying torture is permissible – on innocent people, torture is permissible in random situations where we're not checking the people being tortured. No, we're, the military fact checks. If you extend the second, if you extend the uh, U Toronto card in the second contention, we say any responsible military is going to make sure this person is guilty before we torture them. Which moves us to the third contention. They talk about how we're violating human dignity, dignity of the people being tortured and dehumanizing. One, these people are already dehumaning, dehumanizing themselves when they are trying to commit mass murder of people in the United States, they are not like people that we're trying to save, right? They're trying to hurt thousands of people, even millions of the people. So at the point where we're using a utilitarian moral calculus, we're going to outweigh this hurting human dignity for this one guilty person by saving thousands of lives. Again, that's the most important thing in this round, saving lives. Move to their fourth fourth contention. They say um, now torture in like this ticking time bomb situation is not going to be subject to only a detainee. It's going to be subject to innocent people again. Again, look back to our second observation in our case. We say we're not justifying torture of innocent people. We're justifying torture of guilty people. And at this point, it's most important in this round that you look back to the framework. They never respond to it. Utilitarian framework, we're talking about weighing the, the total happiness of people. And the reason a utilitarian framework is the most just is because it treats everybody equal. And that's why it's the most moral thing to talk about in this round. And at the point where we're going to save thousands of lives in even one situation, that means you affirm because it's a utilitarian benefit and you're establishing benefits that high outweigh the cost of, of temporary physical discomfort. Thank you. Okay. I believe. Right, first question? Yeah, yeah, you have the first question. All right, cool. All right, everyone ready? Yeah. All right, awesome. So, um, to the to the fact of your utilitarian, uh, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah sure. About your utilitarian of Sam, uh, framework, right? Yeah. So we're gonna be talking about this as uh, ends based. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, for the to- uh, for the fact that torture actually allows more people to uh, become terrorists. Again, you don't you don't look to the response I make in the second contention. Sorry, on your first contention where I'm talking about one, you never quantify the yes, actual. We do. Re- you quantify the recruitment. Yes, we do. Can you? Yeah, where do you sure. quantify it? We, we actually quantify the top of our case. Can I'll you give me the? Yeah, right can right you here. give me the card? Torture causes more terrorism than the Truman, po- the Truman Project reported that the terrorist attacks in Iraq increased 11 times after Abu Ghraib, from 132 per Abu Ghraib to 100. F- okay, again, that's – okay, that's n- – first of all, you never proves causation. You after never, the torture never, of Abu Ghraib, oh, that's when the Iraq war came into more full effect, right? Okay, can you, so doesn't that can make you, sense? Can you, give me that, a, can you give me an example where the torture has actually led to thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people? Okay, okay. sure. Look back to our first contention. George Tang, it talks about 20 plots where yeah, it talks about have, torture thwarting 20 plots against the United States on infrastructure targets such as nuclear power okay, plants. Then, then, That's going to kill thousands of people, your, even millions, right? What's, what's, your, what's your response to concepts like uh, Barack Obama uh, having a full recall of uh, torture? I, why do I need to respond to that? Like, why does that matter? Why does that matter? You mean the president? We're talking – just because Barack Obama does something doesn't mean – that's what's just. We're talking about specific situations where okay, we're saving so, thousands so of lives. You, okay, in a situation okay. where you can torture someone, and that means you will be saving thousands of how lives you if you don't. That? How can you Why do we need to that? guarantee it? Why do you need to guarantee it? Because otherwise your whole point of uh, pr- uh, attacking innocents falls. So, so what's, the, what's the responsibility of the United States government? You're just saying – you're just saying – Wait, uh, can you answer my question? What's the responsibility of the United States government? Responsibility of the United States government. To protect government. the people, right? Also, to protect uh, its people. morals. We're, we're, okay, so like the ultimate goal of the United States government is to uphold morals or provide protection for the people. Like social contract theory talks about the government protecting the people, right? Well, you give up some rights to gain more rights. Yeah, sure. The right of life. That, like that's, yeah. that's the, up, the utmost okay. life. Like can you have any rights if you're dead? Can I ask a question? Can you answer that one first? If you have rights when I'm dead? Yeah, can you have rights if when I, you're dead? I can have rights when I'm in a prison, even though I'm innocent. No, but but I'm talking about, like, like this is my no, justification. No. Your justification, all you've been talking no. about is the fact, and you haven't really given me hard examples. How can you I, guarantee that only okay. the guilty parties will be used? Okay, I'm not guaranteeing that. I'm saying— So innocent okay. lives can be affected. 
technically, but can I, can I respond? Okay, first you're extending the cargo my second contention that's talking about how a responsible military is going to try to make sure that they're, that they're torturing a guilty person. And second of all, we're saying we're going to outweigh those small do we, harms do we have of possible. Wait, can I finish? Go ahead. We're going we're gonna to outweigh those small harms of possibly per, uh, torturing an innocent person for the extreme benefit of but saving again, thousands of lives. Again, again that's going to outweigh everything. You're not guaranteeing it at all. Uh, we're just going to start on the AC, and then I'll talk about, like, the weighing arguments. Ready? Ready? Okay, so they're just basically saying that it is a utilitarian uh, uh, calculus. However, I preempted this by saying that uh, contention one basically says that torture is counterproductive. This preempted that argument because I'm going to be turning every argument he's going to be trying to extend out of the uh, out of the uh, out of the pro because he says that torture uh, tries to uh, solve for um, the uh, solves uh, occasionally. However, the the data inside cell point A clearly states that there's 11 times 11 fold increase in terrorism whenever we use terrorism uh, a torture in Abu Ghraib, which means that this is just going to uh, put a big turn on the uh, pro because insofar as torture just creates more terrorism, that's going to be counterproductive and that's going to outweigh any of the harms he's talking about because more terrorism means that more people dying, more people being subject to this harm. But then second, if you don't, if you still don't buy that argument, you could still go to the second, uh, the second card, which says that uh, the Matthew Alexander card, you could extend this because this, th this tells you that 90% of suicide bombers in Iraq are enraged by the fact that we um, tortured their prisoners. That's why they're um, uh, uh, taking part in these, uh, uh, in these missions. That's why that, the, that's why that's, that's the cause of many thousand uh, American deaths, and that's 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 just going to outweigh everything that he's going to argue about. But second, you could go to some point B, extend it. Whenever uh, whenever uh, these people are going to fabricate stories to try to uh, stop the pain, this uh, this this uh, these kind of uh, information is going to be misleading, and this might cause us uh, um, to on a road that is misleading. But but third, you could go to uh, contention two, uh, extend this as well. It, because we it tarnishes the image of the state that it pursues it, they're not going to respect this anymore. Which means that the U.S. is going to lose in its uh, hegemony over other countries, that's just going to hurt us in the long run. So in, in, in the long run, that um, in the utilitarian, uh, in the utilitarian cal calculus, I'm going to be outweighing everything he's going to be trying to extend out of the app because I'm, I'm single-handedly turning every argument he's saying. He says that, oh, we stopped uh, terrorism on one instance, but then it increases 11 times after that. That's just going to mean that more terrorism is always going to outweigh because insofar as there's more terrorism, then there's going to be more lives lost, which means that I'm always going to be outweighing on the utilitarian scale. So you ought to vote con. There's no reason to vote F. Opponents ready? Part ready? Yeah. Judges? Okay, I'd like to condense this round down to its major components. First, to address the framework. As it's been established, we are discussing this resolution under a utilitarian framework under which the right to life precludes that of anything else. So that's what you're going to be weighing this um, on. Furthermore, um, to weigh the moral considerations of the government, I'd like to just clarify that the purpose of the government, as established by social contract theory, is to protect the rights of its citizen, namely the right to life. Now, this is more important than anything 
anything else. So the primary concern of the government is to protect the lives of its citizens. And you're going to see that this is going to be the most important deciding factor within the round. Now, moving on to the first big contention, which has been the efficacy of torture. Now, while they have brought up some stories of false contentions, you have to look to the cards within our case. All we have to do is show you that one massive attack has been averted and saved thousands of lives. That is all you need to vote AF because of these lives outweighing everything else that they can bring to the table. Now, you can look to our George Tenet card, which basically stated that they prevented 20 terrorist plots which aimed to destroy nuclear power plants, dams. All of these could have killed thousands, if not tens of thousands of lives. So you can see that we outweigh there. Now, they bring up Iraq, where there was an increase in terror after Abu Ghraib. Now, you have to realize that this is not causation, simply correlation. After Abu Ghraib, the Iraq war came into full swing, and that is why there was an increase in terror attacks. As we put more troops on the ground, it's, uh, it's reasonable to state that the terrorist attacks will increase in response to this boost in troops. Okay, and they haven't responded responded to the fact that um, while there might be increase in uh, terror, we are also going to be getting the information from these high-level people who are going to be averting these attacks, and this is why we're going to vote pro. But then let's move on to ethical considerations, which their main argument is about damage inflicted to these terrorists. I'd like to point out that they're already inherently dehumanized enough that we're not actually going to value their rights as much as the lives of other people. And because it is the responsibility to guarantee these rights of its citizens, I urge you to vote pro. Thank you. Your first question. I think you guys. Yeah. Okay. Sure. When terrorism increases 11 times, isn't that a lot of death? Okay. We, first of all, we, we make the response one that you never prove causation between the torture and the increase. But in that's terrorism. where the Matthew we, Alexander wait, argument comes in. Did you finish? respond to that? What was the Alexander card again? Well, so you didn't respond to that, right? I mean, I don't remember. That's a conceded an argument. Okay. No, 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 th no, it's no, not a conceded not. argument. You I don't remember which card anything. was labeled as Alexander. Can you just tell me that? Which card was? It was labeled Matthew Alexander. Okay, can you just <laughs> tell, you just tell me, me what me the card it said? What, what, what did it say? Can you just outline it for me? Oh, you want me to read it? Yes. You, can you Matthew just give me Alexander concludes, quote, as a senior interrogator in Iraq for a task force charged with hunting down Abu Zarqawi, the former al-Qaeda leader and mass murderer, captured foreign fighters, cite the torture and abuse at Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo as their main reason for coming to Iraq to fight. Okay. Consider that 90% of the suicide bombers in Iraq are these foreign fighters, and you can easily conclude that we have lost hundreds, if not thousands, of American lives because of, the, of our okay. policy to torture okay. and abuse. Okay. So basically, the problem with that is you're talking about First of all, you're no. Saying, my question is, did you respond to that in your last speech? Um, yes. Okay. Based on what? Okay. Here's the response, right? That foreign, like, first of all, you never prove that that's the only reason the foreign fighters. And come. you never, you okay. never prove Wait, that. Wait, okay. you never? Can I? Can okay. can we move back to like what you're talking about? No, we can't move back. We have to move forward. Okay. The, oh, wait, can can <laughs> we please really just funny. discuss the argument? This. No, okay. I'm not. I'm just asking wait. a technical question. Did you respond to this in your last speech? The Matthew Alexander court. I, yes. I responded to my yes. bubble. Like, oh, first no, of all, and I res either, it either in my way, we it's talk about one. You never respond to my ar to my response in your rebuttal that says the Middle East is already highly anti-U.S. and you and that yes, they're we all do. that Alexander card okay, is exactly can I, rebuttal. Can I finish? So wait, just highly, okay, just you, you highly anti-U.S. increases in terrorism the eleven times. Of other okay, factors. We tell there's increase. other factors with the information you get out of interrogations other than oh, we torturing out information. Right. Okay, but, justified. That, either, infor that information, okay, information either way, paired with wait, other can I finish? Okay, specifically the Abu Ghraib, do you, our response there is valid, right? You don't prove causation, and thus, at the point where we're showing you that after what Abu Ghraib... Can I ask you a question? Can I ask no, you a question? No, your evidence doesn't prove causation. It says right, after right. Abu Ghraib... Can I ask you a follow-up question? Wait, can I, can I finish? No, I get your Just argument. Let, I get let your okay. finish, please. Well, then what is my argument? Okay, so you say that because there's anti-American feelings at, at, in the Middle East, but no. does that just cause overnight terrorism That's, to increase 11-fold? 
Okay, no, I'm trying to explain to you why. Because, first of all, like, it doesn't increase eleven fold overnight. After Abu Ghraib's torture, mm -hmm. the, Uni the United States increased activity in Iraq, and thus it's simply logical that there is going to be more terrorist attacks on United States soldiers in Iraq if we have more soldiers there. But either way, we are still always outweighing on this idea of saving lives then, through terrorism. But then the analysis because we talk about how torture gets information from high level officials okay. and takes down high level. One, have we talk about how one torture. Uh, information given by torture is not always accurate. And right, but no, we no, have no. we have shown you specific cases in which yeah. these informants have given us valuable information. I'm sorry, how much pop do we have left? I think it's 115, but... Okay. Everyone ready? I'll basically uh, clear up what seems to be a very messy round. All right. So um, I, the only thing I think we've agreed on is that we're talking about utilitarianism here. So since we're talking about utilitarianism, the reason why you are going to vote uh, in favor of the negative here is the fact that, one, our first contention does turn it overall. Now, even, though, even if you do agree with what my opponents might say that they did attack the Matthew Alexander card, which uh, me and my partner contend that they have not, is the fact that, um, yes, we're going to be talking about uh, evidence versus evidence, what's been extended, what hasn't. But the bottom line is torture is not moral and not justifiable at all. Yes, it could save lives, but my, my opponents already agreed that there's a chance that we also torture innocent people. Once again, what limits are we willing to go to to allow torture to be justified? If we're going to start harming innocent uh, people who may be innocent or may not be innocent, where does this stop? Yes, they're, yes, they're all, yes my opponents are going to say that they're already dehumanized. But the fact that we, uh, the whole turn on utilitarianism to the con side, that it actually promotes terrorism, is huge. Yes, there's these couple of examples which even I can argue is correlational because they don't go to a certain location only on intel from tortured individuals. There's intelligence from multiple other things, maybe satellite photos, maybe FBI investigations, and even the FBI card that I brought up at the beginning of this round. There are multiple other aspects of information that we use to, in order to find out what these terrorists are doing. Torture alone does not accomplish this, nor do my opponents really show it to you. Yes, torture may have played a small role in in that card that leads off their first contention. However, that can not simply be the only reason why. Otherwise, that individual from our uh, subpoint B in that contention would mean that we caught Osama bin Laden about five years ago. But that's not the truth. We use other aspects, and this is why what, uh, the negative is outweighing on utilitarianism here. We're showing you that we're not only protecting our lives, but we're protecting other lives, especially since now we're combining the intelligences of multiple agencies without the use of torture like the FBI, which shows you that it's possible to protect uh, lives without the use of torture. Thank you.
Okay. Tommy Chuggy? And Judge is ready. Okay, so remember, we're evaluating the round under your utilitarian framework. At this point, saving thousands of lives in, in exchange for temporary physical discomfort of torturing one terrorist is always going to outweigh under utilitarian framework. You're always going to prefer saving thousands of lives. So at the point where we prove that we're doing this even once on, under the affirmative case, you're always going to vote, vote, uh, vote affirmative. So move to basically the only main issue in this round, and this is the issue of saving lives, specifically by stopping terrorist attacks. Now, one. Their only argument and only turn against us has they've said – they talk about increased recruitment in – uh, Iraq because of torture on Abu Ghraib. Now, one, we show you, we tell you that they never prove causality here, but even if you don't buy that argument, we are still always going to outweigh. And the reason for this is that we tell you uniquely that torture gets information from high level terrorist officials that's going to thwart an attack on U.S. soil. They can never get that information under the, ne- the in the negative world. And at the point where the affirming of world is the only place where we're going to get that information, you're always going to affirm. Now, they say, look, there could be mistakes. You never guarantee this happening. Look back to the George Tenet card in our first contention that we've extended numerous times that they've never responded to. He cites 20 plots against United States infrastructure, including nuclear power plants, thwarted directly because of torture techniques used against high-level al-Qaeda members. At this point, you're clearly seeing that impact flowing through, and you're always going to affirm under utilitarian calculus because of that impact. There's no way you can negate. At the point where this has even happened once, you're always going to affirm. Now, the only response they've made to this is sometimes it's not going to work. And, and my response to that is like, sure, sometimes it doesn't work. But at the point where we're seeing this impact ever, you're still going to affirm. And even if it doesn't work, again, look back to the fact that the government's responsibility is to protect civilian lives, protect the security of civilians. And at the point where they need to have action in doing that, at, in, in, an, in an instance where there is going to be a terrorist attack, there needs to be some action to thwart that. And you're always going to outweigh. Thank you. Um, I think that this debate got kind of sidetracked off the question, is torture justified in combating terrorism, into a debate on the slightly different question, should America use torture? And that's a different question because it can be taken in at least two ways. You could ask yourself the question, is torture an efficacious means for combating terrorism? Because if it isn't efficacious and it doesn't work, then of course you shouldn't use it. It doesn't achieve the ends you want it to achieve. On the other hand, you could ask the question, should America use torture and intend to say, is torture something that we can't do under any circumstances? That, I think, is the question that the resolution really put to us by using the phrasing, is torture justified? Now, the pro uh, straightforwardly grasps the nettle by saying, we want to use the utilitarian framework. The con claims that they try to preempt the utilitarian argument, but what they actually do is concede it by trying to argue that torture is not efficacious. And that devolves into the question, do people lie under torture? And at one point, Khan freely concedes by saying, well, torture, is, torture stops working after a few days, which makes it sound like it works for the first few days. And so then I'm left to compare the pain inflicted on one terrorist for some finite period of time versus saving the lives of, who knows, hundreds of people, perhaps. And I freely buy the argument that you need to have the right to life to enjoy any other right. So it seems straightforward to me that the pro side represented by the team from Stuyvesant wins this round.
Well, I agree with that sort of uh, characterization of the round. I think that the way the actual sort of evidence plays out leads me to think that the con actually takes the round, and the reason being that the first question is, does torture ever work? That seems to be the first relevant question in the round. And I think uh, Pro does a sufficient job sort of demonstrating that, of course, it can work at some times. There's analysis from George Tenet that says that it's stopped X number of attacks from taking place and X number of lives have been saved. But that's, I think, insufficient to show that torture is morally justified. In fact, if you look at Pro's own wording, they say, it's, you need to appeal back to this utilitarian framework to decide whether or not even just one, even just one success you know, would work or not. And they sort of reiterate over and again, well, if it works once, it must necessarily outweigh on this utilitarian framework. But I think that they fail to do sufficient legwork in explaining what exactly that means and why one success is sufficient to actually do that. Because at the end of the day, utilitarianism as a framework just says you ought to achieve the greatest good for the greatest many, or however you want to construe that, the greatest number of lives for the greatest many, so on and so forth. So if you destroy one innocent life, it's not clear why that's any less important than saving one, in, uh, than saving one innocent life or some sort of trade-off. And I think when you look at the specific evidence prevent, uh, presented, a pro doesn't really do enough to beat back these arguments that even if you can prevent some attacks from happening, it actually induces more torture. They say this is merely correlation, not causation, but the analysis specifically says that uh, a, lot of this, a lot of these people are signing to fight exactly because of, explicitly because of the torture policies. And I think that they also never really do a sufficient job dealing with the idea of uh, a slippery slope emerges where, you know, if you can justify one, in, you can justify torturing one innocent person to save uh, to stop the potential terrorist attack. Why can't you do this for any number of innocent people, right? Why can't you torture innocent upon innocent until you come across the one that actually works? And I think that's where Pro really fails, which is they fail to do the weighing that they imply the utilitarian framework would require. And because of that, and because they don't engage well enough with the, anal uh, with the actual evidence on the ground, I, was, uh, I voted for the con. And then I have the fun job of telling you guys who won. Um, so I agree a lot with what the, uh, the last judge said. I think that weighing on both sides could have been done better, uh, especially since you're both going for impacts on lives. I think some analysis on the, probable, the probabilistic analysis on how likely adding torture is to change the percentage of that many people dying and not just how many could die in the worst case scenario. And also some time analysis would have been good as well, looking at We've had, we have this stat from Abu Ghraib and the five years past that and some stats on things that could have attacked America right, uh, right now. But in the end, I ended up siding with the pro. I bought a lot of Khan's arguments. Uh, the Alexander card I bought. I also bought the, um, uh, the analysis above it about the 11-fold increase in terrorist attacks. But the reason I end up siding with the pro is because of the tenant card, which specifically says they're looking at attacks on the U.S. soil, including nuclear power plants and other uh, scenarios that could kill thousands. So if we're looking at if I'm giving all of the impact I possibly could to um, the Alexander card, I'm looking at thousands of soldiers dying. But if I'm giving any impact to the tenant card, I'm looking at thousands of civilians, if not millions of civilians dying. And in a case where there's no probable weighing and all I have to go on is absolute numbers, I end up siding with the Thank you for your time.